Hi guys, all right, today I'm gonna to be taking you through a glute workout and giving you the best tips to fill your glutes in the exercises that I'm doing for this workout. So I'm really just taking you through my workout for the day and giving you tips and cues along the way. So I have two pads here for my abduction machine. When I have my legs in the seat, there's this huge space here on both sides. And that's going to be a lack of range of motion because when I come in, look how much more space I have to still move my glutes through. My preference for my glutes in this machine is I prefer a forward lean. Everybody is different. Some people prefer to be straight up. Some prefer to be back. You could even do a mix of all three if you wanna get fancy with it. But for the purposes of this workout and me doing exactly what I actually do, I just like to come towards the edge of the seat, have my pads, I'm going to lean forward, brace onto the machine, go push out. Once I feel fully contracted, I'm gonna stop there. Could I probably push myself and go even further back if I was going for flexibility? Sure, but that's not the goal here. The goal is just the glutes. Next up, barbell RDL, an amazing movement for the glutes, but also a movement that a lot of people struggle with feeling their glutes specifically. You can really feel your lower back, your upper body, your hamstrings, all those things take over. Yes, those all play a role in this exercise. It is normal to feel muscles that are working in an exercise, but you can do little tweaks and tricks to emphasize or bias more of a specific muscle group. So with a barbell RDL, if we're wanting to bias more of the glutes, there's different little cues and tips and tricks that you can do in order order to accomplish that. So first I'm gonna show you without the barbell, just body weight. So in an RDL, there are a few things. You wanna have your knees slightly out of lockout and then leave them there. That's what a typical RDL position would be. However, when you're trying to bias more glutes and get more glute drive out of your RDL, you can actually allow for a little bit more generosity in how much you bend your knees. The more bend, the more pushing back you'll be able to have. So when you go into your RDL, it's not about how much you can bend over, how low you can get the weight. What it's about is how far back you can drive your glutes behind you. So you want to imagine that somebody has their hands on your waist or someone has a rope behind you and they're just pulling your hips back. This is hip extension. So just imagine someone's pulling behind you. Now incorporate the weight with that. All you're thinking about is allowing the weight to travel down while somebody is taking their hands and pulling your hips back. Those together is really where you're gonna get that glute stretch. Once I can't feel my glutes push back anymore and they're fully under tension, I'm going to, the whole time, I'm thinking about contracting my glutes, but especially at the bottom, you're really focusing on contracting those glutes and using them to drive that weight back up. It's not about bending into the bar like this. That is not more glutes. The tension is on your glutes at the bottom of the movement, not the top. There's no tension on your glutes at the top. So squeezing into the bar like this, all that's really doing is hyperextending your lower back, which can cause injury, pain, discomfort, all that. We don't want none of that. We just want the most out of our glutes. Now we're gonna add some weight to the bar slowly work our way up to our working set weight and put all those cues together and that will make for a perfect glute bias RDL. So a little warm up set, so I just did a couple of reps. Also note how I keep my back nice and straight, my head in line, my spine nice and neutral. I'm not bending my neck back like this while I go. None of that, just keeping a nice neutral back and spine and neck as I drive back. Now I'm getting into my working weight and to make sure I really can keep that focus on my glutes, I'm actually going to switch to a mixed grip because this is going to be a stronger grip if you're not using lifting straps. Since our focus here is the glutes, not grip strength. So I'm switching to a mixed grip.
Platz. All right, next is barbell hip thrust, constant tension. So when it comes to your glutes and your setup, you want your feet position. This is going to be another one of those, feel it out, what feels best for you. Some people really do prefer a wider stance. Others prefer to have it a little bit more narrow or even really narrow. Demo purposes, I'm just going to have it straight in line with my shoulder blades. So when I come up to the top, I want my foot in position where my shin is staying vertical at the top. The more in your feet are to your body, the more quad that's going to be. The further out your feet are, the more hamstring that's going to be when you come to the top. And since we're trying to focus on the glutes, we wanna be right in the middle there. That's going to be the sweet spot to where when you come up, you have that completely vertical shin. Now your chin, you always wanna keep it tucked. Tucked and looking forward. Because what happens is, is when you're looking up at the ceiling, that makes it very easy to hyper extend your lower back at the top, which is what you do not want in a hip thrust. You want to keep all your tension on the glutes. So by keeping that chin tucked, eye gaze forward, when you come up to the top, it's going to be harder for your body to allow you to hyper extend because it's going to put a lot of discomfort and pressure on your neck. So when you have that chin tucked, gaze forward, nice foot placement, come up. Once your glutes are fully shortened, squeezing as hard as you can, get that full nice tight contraction, you'll then come back down. So I'm going to come up, nice tight squeeze, and then go down. Once I have all that tension off of my glutes, I'm gonna go right back into it again, rather than fully resetting like you would in a dead stop hip thrust. Right there, perfectly tight lockout. Down, tension's off the glutes, back up. Next up, we are doing another RDL variation. So we are doing a dumbbell RDL B stance with a twist. You want the weight to be held on the hand that is on the inside of the working leg. So this is the side I'm working first. So I have the weight in this hand. So I'm gonna slide that foot back, bring it out. And obviously you can adjust your base a little bit if you need to. Same RDL cues apply here as well. We're just doing it with one leg instead of two. So again, just imagining driving back as that weight moves down. But the thing is with this, because there's a twist, as you get to the bottom, you're going to be rotating as you drive back. And that extra twist, that rotation is going to bring your glutes through a further stretch. So again, just more emphasis on the glutes here. Your other arm, you can have out for some extra added stability as well. Once I feel a full stretch, I'm going to come back up. That's a good one. Next up is a glute bias back extension, rounded back extension, whatever you would like to call it. Now I'm using this whole setup because my gym does not have a back extension machine. We only have a GHD machine and that just gets way too much of my hamstrings most of the time. So when I am trying to bias a little bit more of the glutes, I like to just use this whole setup. It's just a lot easier for me. But if your gym does have a back extension machine, go ahead and just use that. But if not, you can go ahead and just copy this setup I have going on here. Whether you're on the back extension or you're using this, you want it to be pretty much set up right where you would have the barbell with doing a hip thrust. 
so that when you hinge over, you can get a full stretch at the bottom and then come back up and squeeze our glutes. So it's not a super huge movement. You don't need to go all the way till you're completely flopped over and you definitely don't wanna surpass that fully shortened position at the top. Anything past that is going to be hyperextension of the lower back, which is going to put a lot of pressure and emphasis on your lower back and that's what we don't want again. All about the glutes here. What you're going to do is round your shoulders, tuck your chin, you're gonna do this if you're doing body weight. So you see how I'm nice and round and compact? This is going to help turn off, turn off those spinal erectors so you get even less back into the movement and keep all that emphasis on the glutes and make it a whole lot easier. Now I'm going to be incorporating weight. So I'm going to hold a plate and I'm actually going to be holding it up by the top of my head right here. Some people prefer to hold it in closer to their chest. I like to keep it more up here just to keep a little bit more tension on my glutes. So again, when you're holding weight, you're still gonna, the same rules apply. Chin tucked, keep those shoulders rolled in. You just have to be a little bit more mindful of it since you're not able to just squeeze your body and keep it all tight and compact, but it's really easy once you get the drive of it. And now we're ending the workout with one set of 50 reps of body weight glute bridges with an incline. Now I wanted to show you the setup I have here. So I'm using this for my incline. So just get whatever step riser your gym has. And then I'm also using a BOSU ball here. This is going to help support my neck so I can keep that chin tucked so I can keep all that emphasis on my glutes and keep my back from hyperextending. So you don't have to use a BOSU ball, but it's definitely going to help make the movement a lot more comfortable, especially with doing higher reps. It can get a little bit straining on those neck muscles to just hold your chin tucked the entire way through. So same feet positioning as you prefer with your hip thrust, really just feel it out if you want a little bit more wide or narrow. Doesn't really matter, you don't need to be too picky with it. And then I like to keep it more focused on the middle end of my heel when it comes to doing these. And you want to dig your elbows, dig your back into the ground, keep your chin tucked, eyes looking forward, come up, squeeze your glutes at the top, and then come back down. Now I'm doing one set of 50, so I'm just going to be pumping these out. This is just about blood flow and exhaustion at the end of a workout, and that is about it. So I'm just going to get through these as best as I can. Halfway is when the burn really kicks in. 27, 28, 29. Oh my goodness. Ow. 39. 37. Oh my god. Two more. Oh my god. Burn. Ow, ow. And make sure those are good reps too. Notice how I got a nice squeeze and pause at the top of every rep, no matter how painful it was. So when you cheat your reps, you're only cheating yourself. That was a brutal workout. I know I didn't film every set of everything I was doing. I wanted this video to be more of just like a little informative, a little bit of tips and tricks and cues for getting the most out of your glutes. So hopefully you found some of these tips helpful. If you did, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. If you want more structured training like this, you can go ahead to my website. It's linked down below and find my 12 week workout program and my eight week home or gym workout program down there. My entire fit is from Gymshark. Use the code HUNTERCP at checkout and it saves you money at checkout. Thank you guys so much for your support as always. And I'm winded. I try to do that in one go. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys.